Right off the bat, we're breaking the rules. Okay, so I know the title says superheroes, but let's use that term loosely in this one, okay? I want to include some actors who went to the dark side for a role or two. It's more fun that way, wouldn't you agree? This was the only way I was going to be able to include Michael B. Jordan. This guy is an incredible actor, but he's only recently dipped his toes into the world of superheroes. Well, except for this tiny mishap. What? <laughs> Steve Montgomery for president! Yikes, we're just gonna move that one over here and keep on moving. I was more so talking about his role as Human Torch, the guy who put the hot in the hot mess this movie became. For many fans, this was his official superhero role. I mean, he wasn't such a disappointment, more so the movie. His MCU debut as Killmonger was? Uh, I can't even put it into words, but I'll try. Uh, he's the best villain Marvel's ever made. Listen to him say this. Is this your king? Huh? Literal chills. Ben Affleck is Schrodinger's actor. He's both talented and not talented at the same time. I believe nothing proves this hypothesis more correct than his two turns as a superhero. Be warned that this entry will get controversial for some of you and I will not be apologizing. So let's start with the obvious fact. Ben Affleck was a train wreck as Matthew Murdock. Anyone who likes that Daredevil movie has never seen the Netflix series or read Frank Miller's run on the character. Everything every actor did in that movie was just wrong, and Ben Affleck did not save that movie. I believe Batfleck to be the right casting choice. The Bruce Wayne we see him play is aged and gritty. He's the Frank Miller version that's lived a full life. In The Dark Knight Rises, we get a grizzled, worn down Batman. Ben Affleck brings that character to life in an honest way, and his scene against those thugs is so perfect. How could you not be impressed by this comeback? It truly is a Schrodinger's actor, you guys. Here's yet another actor whose brilliant performance made me want to add supervillains to the list. Josh Brolin has two years of nearly perfect comic book movies. Did you ever take the time to consider that he was both Cable and Thanos in 2018? How wild is that? On the one hand, we've got this brilliant mix between tragedy and comedy that is Cable in Deadpool 2. Brolin plays him to perfection, and it's sort of scary how much he looks like the character. From his delivery to his posturing, all of it works in this movie. Face it, Brolin is the definition of range as Cable. And well, then again, his time as Thanos was also incredible. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you've been told this once or twice how Infinity War is a Thanos movie, but it's true. Brolin is carrying that film and takes the ultra-confident Thanos and pries open the shell. Think of the scene with Gamora. He's so vulnerable here. And that is award-worthy acting from both of these roles. Hey, uh, Hollywood, might be a good idea to give this guy some more superhero roles in the future. No, I'm gonna stick around for a while. Welcome to round two of I Failed as Human Torch, but Marvel redeemed me. Today's contestant is a middle-aged white man seeking a new chance of being the hero after his Johnny Storm days totally flamed out. <laughs> flamed, get it? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Evans to the list. In all seriousness, here's a fun thought exercise. Who was the best Human Torch in the history of the character on the screen? Yeah, I think we can all agree it was this guy, Quentin Flynn. Okay, so maybe that's still up for debate, but the point remains, there hasn't been a great version of this character on the silver screen. Got it. Supernova. Bad. At least now we know that it wasn't all Chris Evans' fault. In fact, I think his Human Torch was one of the more exciting performances in that entire cast. His role in the first movie is arguably what helped the sequel get made. It's no wonder the MCU gave him a second chance and let him shine as Captain Steve Rogers. If his time as Cap doesn't prove my point, then I don't know what will. Michael Keaton, the granddaddy of the list, the OG movie Batman, and the man who helped inspire Bruce Timm's animated Batman character. Let's pay our respects. Without Keaton, there is no Batfleck. There's no Dark Knight trilogy without this risky chance at changing history. So it's incredible to think about the fact that he's still in superhero movies after all of this time. Now we all remember his re-entry to the superhero genre with Birdman. Even if the film isn't technically about superheroes, he wears the costume. So I'm counting it, alright? It works even better because the story plays off his psyche following his role of Batman in Burton's run. The whole thing works in tandem. Then there was his return to the real roots of the genre as Vulture. Now, I'll admit I was skeptical at first. I didn't know if Keaton was going to return to form in this one. I was proved so wrong, and I am so thankful for that fact. I'm pretty sure he's the only person on this list who's been a mainstay in three successful superhero movies. What a run. 
It's not fair. We were so close to watching Scarlett Johansson carry her first MCU film as a titular character. Then suddenly, the rug just went right out from under us. I know this entry isn't about that, but I just needed a place to vent, okay? Scar jo is excellent as Black Widow, and I don't think we could have first seen her staying power back in Iron Man 2. Even if you told me that she'd be the significant endgame loss back then, I wouldn't think it would carry the weight it actually did. She sort of stole the show as Black Widow. That's how well she pops on screen. Then there's her role in Motoko in Ghost in the Shell. I get that some of you in the comments might say that she's not a superhero, but I'm counting it. So you can argue about it in the comment section. You can't stop me from doing it. I executed the plan before you even knew about it. Regardless, she utterly failed us with this one, and I only hope that she brings more to the Black Widow movie. Ryan Reynolds' full redemption arc. He failed as Green Lantern, and even today, he'll admit that with full candor. Yeah, that's the best you could come up with for your first big appearance. You know, face it, somewhere out there is a guy with the Green Lantern Blu-ray collecting dust on his shelf because he liked the movie ironically. It's so bad that not even that type of person would watch it again. Then, there was this monstrosity. God, every time I see that perversion I get angry. Who let them do that to Deadpool? I'm thankful that we live in the timeline where the studios gave Deadpool another chance and an R rating. Those poor suckers on Earth 9907 did not get anything like that at all. So bless Ryan Reynolds and bless the fact that we got to see him actually play the real Deadpool. Did you think that we would go this whole list without us mentioning Nick Cage? If there's a way to put him on a list about actors, you can bet your grandma's house I'm gonna find a way to get him in on it. Let's try an experiment. Head down to the comments and write down the two superhero roles that Nick Cage played. All right, now I'm sure everyone mentioned Ghost Rider, right? It's the obvious one and none of us can forget the fact that he did this. <laughs> I still can't believe that movie got a sequel. The second one was probably a little more all over the place. Initially, I thought of Cage lending his voice for Spider-Noir in the Spider-Verse. I loved him as that character, and it's definitely a role I want to see him in again sometime soon. However, I could get cheeky and bring up the fact that he was almost Superman in a Tim Burton version of the Man of Steel. They never made the film though, so I don't know if it counts. There was only one way to start this entry off. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. That line right there is how I will forever remember Halle Berry's career as a superhero. She could play a female version of Nightcrawler, and this would still be how I remembered her. To be fair to her, Storm is a badass Omega-level mutant. If she wanted, she could turn the entire planet into an Arctic wonderland. So I don't think that she's garbage based on that one scene. Halle Berry plays her with confidence and poise. I love that we don't see Storm ever struggle with her powers. She is a confident member of the X-Men with the ability to lead them all if she chooses. See, I can defend Halle Berry as Storm. I do wish that she never played Catwoman. She broke barriers starring in this film and I don't regret that. The movie is awful though, and it turned her into a joke for way too long. She needs a top quality script to bring the most out of a character like that. This role was not doing that for her, unlike Storm. I sort of forgot the Venom movie even existed before this list. Tom Hardy is an actor with all the range and desire to give everything for the role. We see it in every film that he does, and I never leave feeling that he's phoned a scene in during any of his movies. Even if you don't like his Bane, I'd argue that there's a lot of layers brought to the character just through his eyes. It's hard to communicate a character's feelings when their mouth is covered, but Hardy manages to pull it off. I know The Dark Knight Rises isn't a top film on anyone's list, but don't diss Bane. Now I know Venom is not a crowd favorite, but I recently re-watched the film. The best thing I can say is Tom Hardy certainly does a better job than Topher Grace. The biggest issue with the film is the way they handle the story. I'd argue that Hardy made the most out of his screen time, even if Venom doesn't shine. These are two challenging roles that he made the most out of. 